The story of Lake Apopka is familiar to many. The state's fourth largest lake was once a world-class bass fishery, but impacts to the lake over many decades led to it being named Florida's most polluted large lake. Most of this land was once underwater as it was part of floodplain wetlands along Lake Apopka's northern shore. In the early 1940s, about 20,000 acres were drained for farming to support the war effort during World War II. The resulting agricultural runoff, combined with other factors, contributed to the lake's eventual decline. The St. John's River Water Management District acquired farmlands within the Lake Apopka North Shore between 1988 and 1999 in a state-mandated buyout. The goal? Restore water quality and fish and wildlife habitat within the lake and also the upper Ocklawaha River Basin. While these public lands help protect water quality and storage, they also are home to a wide variety of indigenous flora and fauna. In recent years, the district and its partners have been writing a new chapter in Lake Apopka's story, a story about creating improvements in water quality and the restoration of wildlife habitat. Part of our efforts purchasing the farms is directed. We evaluated each property for potential contaminants, pesticides, any kind of agrochemicals. Uh, after that was completed and the last crops were off the land, we let the land be fallow and water accumulated out on those fields. Fish accumulated in those flooded areas and that in turn attracted wading birds. The extent of the pesticide problem was made clear when we had the large uh, die off of fish eating birds. Um, that caused us to reassess all of the previous pesticide evaluation work that had been done on each farm as it was acquired. Um, that applied research to understand pesticide movement allowed us to develop remediation techniques that we think now have demonstrated their ability to reduce the exposure to wildlife so that we can continue with our wetland restoration, which is critical to the lake's restoration, and create habitat that's safe for wildlife. Today, improving the lake's water quality is critical because of the lake's size and its impact on downstream water bodies such as lakes Dora, Eustis, and Griffin. Not only do improvements mean a return of plants, wildlife, and sport fish, but it also means improved opportunities for nature-based recreation. Over the last several years, the district has implemented a strategy to restore the area in a manner that is safe to wildlife. This strategy includes several new technologies and approaches. One project is the gizzard shad fish harvest from Lake Apaka. The harvesting of these fish, which thrive in heavily polluted lakes, removes the nutrients contained in their bodies. Each year, about one million pounds of fish are removed by commercial fishermen. This improves water clarity by reducing the severity of algal blooms. Another ongoing, innovative project is operation of the Lake Apopka Marsh Flowway, a 760-acre constructed wetland filtering about 40% of the lake's volume each year. As lake water passes through one of the Marsh Flowway's treatment cells, algae and sediments settle out of the water. Soil inversion is another innovative tool used on the Lake Apopka North Shore. The inversion process used modified farm equipment to plow 4,000 acres, essentially flipping three feet of soil, burying residual pesticides below the soil surface and making them less accessible to wildlife. You might not know it, but the St. John's River Water Management District owns or manages nearly 700,000 acres of land in its 18-county service area, acquired for the purposes of water management, water supply, and the conservation and protection of water resources. These lands are teeming with plant and animal life, and there's a diverse group of wildlife who call the Lake Apopka North Shore home. The surrounding area has become one of the premier locations to observe birds in the southeastern United States. Although great wildlife viewing opportunities are available year-round, the best times to bird watch are in the fall, winter, and spring. This is due to the extraordinary diversity of birds that have been documented here. 
to date more than 360 species. The area is so attractive to birds because it has great geography and expansive habitat. In addition to the abundance of birds, there are many mammals and a great number of amphibians and reptiles. And then there's everyone's favorite reptile, the alligator. Well, the abundance of wildlife tells you it's an active food chain where the birds eat the fish and the alligators are a top predator. So we do ask the visitors to take caution when they're out here, respect the wildlife, give them lots of room, don't approach too closely, and whatever you do, don't feed any wild animals. We have two primary tactics for protecting the wildlife and plant species out on the property. The first one is prescribed fire, and that's when we're applying fire to the ground in a very controlled manner under stringent weather conditions where we can kind of predict what the fire is going to do. Uh, most of the plants and animals in Florida are adapted to that and need fire for their survival, so it's a very important tool. The second one we use is an invasive plant management program that uses carefully selected herbicides to control exotic invasive um, weeds that are both in the aquatic systems and in the terrestrial systems. So those two tactics together promote all the native um, habitat that you see around you. When most farming operations ended on the North Shore in the late 1990s, the region suffered significant economic hardships in addition to ecological hardships. It's the hope of the district to not only improve Lake Apopka's water quality, but also improve the quality of life for local residents, and that a return of sport fishing will stimulate economic activity to fill the void created when the farms were retired. We invite you to learn more about the district's restoration work the Lake Apopka property, and sustainable use of Florida's water by visiting our website and following us on social media.